بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا وبعد indeed the best of the words are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best of the guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he warned us to be aware of every newly invented matter in this religion because every newly invented matter in the religion is considered to be a bid'ah an innovation every innovation every bid'ah takes a person astray off the path and every going astray going off the path leads or leaves the person to fall into hellfire ulayadu billah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun all you who believe fear Allah fear him when he is not pleased Fear him when he is disobeyed. Fear his wrath and anger. The way he deserves to be feared, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And make sure that you do not die except in a state of Islam. Continuing the topic that we chose upon the benefits of fasting, we spoke about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a latiful khabir, that he is the gentle, the all knowing. And we mentioned how this name, Al Latif, makes us understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to deal with us. We said, imagine that if you have an angel on your right side or left side writing down everything that you do and you're aware of this angel, how would have your life been? Really miserable. Because you just feel no freedom whatsoever. And the whole issue is about the freedom that Allah gave us. And that's why we mentioned that the parents. Who, who treat their kids like cops and they make sure that they follow them with every little single thing that they do. This is not the way that Allah wants us to bring our kids. We want them to be brought up with their own personality, to know what's right from what's wrong. And even Allah is telling us, I am Al-Khabir, I am well aware of everything that you do, but I am Al-Latif. I am so gentle that you don't even sense and feel that I am with you, knowing everything that you do. So these are from the benefits of fasting that we understand that the uh, worship of fasting is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it teaches us to be aware of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we worship Him. In Ramadan, of course, is the month of competition. When we see how, when we go to the mas masajid, people are rushing there before us. Reciting the Qur'an, we find out that so many are way ahead of us in reciting the Qur'an in giving the sadaqah, in donating, and so on and so forth. In the month of Ramadan, we learn how to compete against each other or with each other for the purpose of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Ramadan, we learn how to settle and be pleased with the little that we have. And when the crisis happened, we heard so many suicides, true or false. So many suicides. Why? Because they just couldn't comprehend the fact that now instead of having a certain amount of money, a certain uh, status of luxury life that they're used to, they couldn't imagine and picture themselves otherwise. So they decided to take their lives away. But the Prophet wasallam, he was given the option. Would you like to live as a miskeen, as a person who has his sustenance day by day or you want to live as a king he chose to live day by day sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam and so was the fact that the companions went through the hardship at the beginning because this just made their hearts detached completely from the dunya and whatever comes next they're ready for it we're not saying throw your money away we're not saying don't go look for the wealth look for the wealth Allah loves the believer who is strong more than the believer who is weak. And both of them, they have goodness in them. But Allah prefers the one who's strong. But that doesn't mean that we make it a purpose of our life to be wealthy or to have this matter in this dunya or that. Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he was asked, O oh, Imam, can a person be Zahid in this dunya and having mi'at alf dinar or mi'at alf dirham, a hundred thousand dirham or dinar? Dirham means it's silver coin, dinar means it's a golden coin. He said, yes, if whether his wealth increases or decreases has no effect on his heart, then he is from the Zahideen. So 
Our heart is attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to the dunya that we encounter in our lives. And whether my wealth increases or decreases, I must have the same level of belief in Allah and dependence upon Allah to be from the Zahideen. In Ramadan, we learned this. We're capable, right? Before Ramadan, we never thought that we're going to be able to make it, especially in the summer. And it's a deja vu for us. Yeah, maybe about 30 years ago or so when it was in the summer, the older ones, they remember when they were kids how tough it was. But in subhanallah, the summer came and Ramadan came and Allah made it easy upon our hearts. In Ramadan, we learn how to get the best of the opportunities. Because in Ramadan, we learn that there's the night of Al-Qadr hidden in the last 10 nights so that we seek that opportunity and not let it go for a waste. In Ramadan, you find so many of the brothers and sisters who pay their zakah, they make the calculation in Ramadan so that they get the rewards multiplied. In Ramadan, you find others seeking whoever is fasting. And, and this is a glad tiding for the sisters. The sisters who have certain times of the month that they're not capable of fasting, Allah sent, as if Allah is sending to them, telling them, don't worry. Don't worry, this is the way I created you, but I gave you an alternative. Just make sure that you prepare iftar for the sa'imin, your husband, your father, your son, your sister, etc. And you will get the reward of every single one of them without decreasing anything from their reward. So in Ramadan, we seek the best of the opportunities. And this is how we need to work with the worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every opportunity that I have, every chance... I jump on it and grab the best of that opportunity. In the hiding of the night of Al-Qadr, of course we know that the night of Laylatul Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it in the last 10 nights. Some say it's the 21st, some say it's the 23rd, 5th or 7th, 29th. Some have other opinions. The scholars say that every Ramadan, it might be in any night of these nights. It could be the 27th, it could be otherwise. But from this we know that since it's in those last 10 nights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to work even harder than what we have been doing the past 20 days of Ramadan, that we buckle our belts and we just put the best of efforts that we have. And can you imagine if you pray one rak'ah, one rak'ah is equivalent to more than 1,000 months. That's a lot of nights, a lot of rak'ahs. 1,000 by that 30,000 nights. So one rak'ah is 30,000 rak'ahs. So when I know that in any of these nights, I might be able to have my deeds multiplied by 30,000 times and more, this is an opportunity for us to even learn how to work harder in Ramadan. Another benefit is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends this month to increase our iman. It's kind of like the battery being recharged. Every Friday, we have the opportunity to listen to the khutbah and that recharges the battery for another week. And every Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an opportunity for us to pray more, to read Quran more, to do more because in the, in the methodology and the manhaj of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, iman is not one level. Iman increases and decreases. It increases with good deeds. The more Quran I read, the more Iman that enters in my heart. The more Salah that I pray, the more Iman that I encounter. So in Ramadan, with all these types of worship that I perform, Allah increases my Iman so that I am able and capable to have my will char charged again and I'm ready for the rest of the year. And so is the case in this blessed month. The next benefit is a benefit that Allah sends to us from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, we understand the man that he encountered his desire with his wife. He came to the Prophet ﷺ and he told him, Halakt, ihtaraqt. I, I'm, I'm perished, I burned, I did what I'm not supposed to do. I had, I encountered and fulfilled my desire with my wife in the day of Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned to him that he has to first free a slave. He told him, Oh Rasulullah, 
I don't have any slave to free. He told him then fast two months, straight two months, 60 days or so. He told him, oh Rasulullah, this is the reason that I fell in this calamity in the first place. Then the Prophet ﷺ told him, then feed 60 people who are in need. He said, by Allah, no one is more of need of the charity than me in the whole Medina. So the Prophet ﷺ, from his mercy, from his rahmah, he went and he took enough for 60 people and told him, take this food from the money of the sadaqah and use it yourself. So from that we see that that feeling of performing the sin makes us and should make us feel as if we burned. That we have encountered a huge sin. The man came to the Prophet ﷺ telling him, Halaktu, ihtaraktu. I, I am perished. I, I, I burned. I consider myself burned now that I committed the sin. That feeling should come to our hearts. And this way we will have our own barriers between us and the sins. And we also learn that the sins are not all the same level. Shaitan is very smart. He has a PhD in, in psychology. And he comes to our minds and to our hearts. And he makes us just lose hope. The minute that we commit any sin, he makes us just lose hope and think that we are not even worthy of worshipping Allah. We're not even worthy of calling and making dua to Allah. And I mentioned to you the story of Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, right? Of how he stayed a whole day. He stayed for a whole day trying to make dua to Allah, but then he was so ashamed of himself. He's like, who am I to ask Allah? Who am I to ask Allah and beg him? And then at the time of sunset, he just said, Oh, by Allah, even if you forgive me, woe to me. What a shame that I even have to go through begging you to forgive me. If the sin has such an effect on us that it makes us stay all day begging Allah, then this is the proper understanding that we should have. But if the sin makes us feel that we are not even worthy, as Al-Hasan al-Basri says, a man came to him and he told him, Oh Imam, shouldn't we be ashamed of ourselves that we commit the sin and then we raise our hands asking Allah? Meaning that we, should, we don't even deserve to make dua to Allah. فَقَالَ لَهُ الْحَسَنُ الْبَصْرِي وَدَّ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يَظْفَرَ بِكُمْ بِهَذِهِ Shaytan would wish and love to capture your heart with such an understanding that if you commit a sin, you don't even deserve to ask Allah. Stay away from Allah. But rather it's the contrary. Allah has created us as sinners. He created us in a way that we must perform and commit the sin so that we beg Him and ask Him to forgive us and then He forgives us. He just loves the fact that we repent back to Him and he, this is Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huwa al-malik. He enjoys when we show humiliation to him. Some of us might start thinking, what is this? So you want us to beg you? We, you want us to show that we are weak? We, you want us to humiliate ourselves? Yes. Yes. This is the plan. That you humiliate yourself. That you put what's highest and what you're proud of in front of the people right where you step with your foot on the ground when you make sujood for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, this is what we need to have between us and Allah, a relationship of a slave towards his master. So in Ramadan, we learn how the sins should make us go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the month of Ramadan, we learn that Ghazwat Badr, Hunayn, and other battles were all in Ramadan. A sense of Ramadan being a month of working, a month of hard working rather than sleeping and doing nothing during the day, trying to kill the time in any way until iftar comes and throughout the night watch movies and so on and so forth. Kill yourself so when the day comes you just crash again. In Ramadan we should work hard and especially in the ibadat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for us. And the next benefit that we will conclude with is that in Ramadan we learn fiqh al-ikhtilaf. In Ramadan we learn the fiqh and how we 
are capable of being different than others because now we are praying tarawih. Other parts of the world, they started fasting already. They are doing ta'a, they're doing a form of worship, and we are doing a form of worship. This should bring to us a sense that we could be different and we could still be worshiping Allah and pleasing Allah, especially when we have a difference of opinion. I mentioned to you the story of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, and Ammar ibn Yasir and how they uh, disagreed upon the ruling of if someone wakes up with janaba, is he allowed to have tayammum or not? Ammar ibn Yasir told him, you were with me, Umar. We were together. When this incident happened, then we asked the Prophet Sallallahu and he told us, yes, you can make tayammum. Umar radiallahu anh, he refused to take that opinion. And even furthermore, we mentioned some of the Sahaba went with the opinion of Ammar ibn Yasir and others went still with the opinion of Umar because Umar refused to take the opinion of Ammar radiallahu anhuma, even though he reminded him, he, he couldn't remember the incident. None of them went against each other telling you, you want to destroy the deen, you don't respect the sunnah, abadan. Al-Imam Ahmad, Al-Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, he has the opinion that if a person does not perform salah because of being lazy, that person leaves the fold of Islam, he becomes a kafir. So if Asr comes, Dhuhr comes and Asr comes, and that person does not pray Dhuhr or Asr, because you could combine, so if they doesn't pray Asr, he believes that if the time of Maghrib enters, that person with no excuse, praying without any excuse, that person becomes a kafir. The majority of the scholars see otherwise. Uh, Shafi'i, uh, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, rahimahumullah, Imam Ahmad used to pray for Imam Shafi'i, who used to, who is his sheikh, in every salah. This is a big opinion for a person to see someone a kafir for a certain ruling, and another sees that he is not a kafir. There is an understanding that if you do not call the kafir a kafir, then you are changing the law of Allah, and that might mean that you become a kafir because you want to change the whole religion of Allah. But still, Imam Ahmad sees that he's a kafir. If that person doesn't pray with any excuse, he's not a Muslim anymore. A Shafi'i, he sees otherwise. Ahmad, rahimahullah, didn't call Shafi'i telling him you're a kafir. A Shafi'i didn't tell Ahmad that you are a kafir. Even more than that, Ahmad, rahimahullah, used to pray and make dua in every salah for Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala. This is an understanding that we need to benefit in Ramadan that we could be different and still both be pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah to increase our knowledge, to make us understand his religion the way that he wants subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we ask him to make us from those who hear the words and act upon the best of what they hear. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين